If you grew up in a Southern Baptist or Evangelical church like I did, you probably recognize these. They're called Chick Tracks, and they were used as a soul-winning strategy to illustrate Bible lessons to mostly young people. They were pretty heavy-handed in their messaging about sin and righteousness and heaven and hell, good and evil. I'll admit, a lot of them scared the bejeebers out of me. As kids, we kind of looked at them as a Christian alternative to the Sunday comics. But as I got older, I started to realize they had a real dark side that I didn't notice when I was younger. They were initially written and illustrated by a man named Jack Chick, who died in 2016. Now, many of them contain messaging that is decidedly anti-Catholic, anti-Mormon, anti-Judaism, and anti-Islam. For a format that intentionally appeals to a younger demographic, they also rely really heavily on fear tactics to keep kids pretty freaked out about sin, hell, Satanism, and the occult. The Southern Poverty Law Center went so far as to designate Chick Tracks publications as an active hate group. Over time, the Chick Tracks, which are still being produced today, have gotten more and more conspiratorial in their messaging. In part two, I'm going to tell you about some of the shady characters that influenced Jack Chick's messaging and how he took the work of a black man and made it his own. Do you recognize these Chick Tracks? They contain some pretty shady messaging. Jack Chick's style seems to imitate the work of a well-known counterculture cartoonist named Robert Crumb. In 1972, people began to notice that the quality of the drawings in his tracks started to improve dramatically, but he always took credit for being the sole artist. Finally, in 1980, he admitted to hiring a black man named Fred Carter, a painter from Danville, Illinois. He claimed that Carter was just shy and didn't want his own name being listed on the artwork. Now, Chick's super conspiratorial anti-Catholic, anti-Judaism, anti-Muslim, and anti-gay messaging has been heavily influenced by his association with an evangelist named John Todd, a man who claimed to be raised by a witchcraft family and was later exposed as a fraud and was sent to jail on rape charges. His primary influence, though, Alberto Rivera, claimed to be a Jesuit priest with all kinds of insider info. Well, this dude has a string of lawsuits and arrest warrants a mile long. His degrees and claims about being a part of the Jesuit priesthood could never be proven. These men are long dead, but their work continues to be used by missionaries to influence people all over the world.